Merry Meet and welcome everyone. I'm Witch Hazel and today I am excited to be talking about your journey to witchy wisdom by combining history and magical mastery. So this is probably going to be a little bit of a ramble and because of that let's get started. Let's talk history. I know what you're going to say but Hazel I already know the history I know all about this is the old religion, the paganism that came before Christianity and any of the other monotheistic religions. I know all about the burning times, the Inquisition, the Salem witch trials, and all that bad stuff. <laughs> Seems like it, right? All of witchy history is bad. Persecution upon persecution. and But here's the thing. I see two negative consequences of this kind of generic, general, historical background that most of us have. For one thing, in this age of ye old Google and instant information, we don't know how much of the information we're getting is good or bad. And I will say, a lot of it is not necessarily bad, but half-baked. Uh, a lot of it comes from assumption. A lot of it is just plain old fabricated. So it's very difficult as witches to get a real understanding of what our history is. So that's one thing. I believe it's important to spend a decent amount of time on this. Another thing that I find as a negative with our history research that we typical do, typically do, many witches who are maybe a bit jaded toward the other religions, maybe they came from a background which was not so accepting, will tend to take on this mantle of persecution and use it against other groups. And that is completely opposite of what we should be doing. What we should be doing, in my opinion, is finding the connections to anyone and everyone around us. Because by doing that, we have a greater understanding of our connection to the divine because we can see that well I have a divine spark that guy's got a divine spark that kid over there has a divine spark hey we are all divine sparks that means we all come from the same thing so without getting on too much of a soapbox I don't like how some history is treated and I'm a bit of a history fan I mean that was always my favorite thing growing up so it's important to me so what I want to focus on instead is the idea of bringing back a scholarly focus to our history. And what I mean by that, because I will admit I don't know of too many current scholarly works, meaning something that has been researched, published, you know, multiple things researched and made connections uh, connected together. I don't know of too much of that anymore. Uh, all of the new witchy books coming out, it seems like it's just everyone's opinion. And this is what happened. That's what happened. But there's not really any citation anywhere. And me being me, I like citations. I live for bibliographies because they give me more information to go find. My favorite works along these lines come really from the early part of the 20th century, uh, mid 20th century, I guess, to earlier in the form of not necessarily pagan works, but uh, theosophy, for example, which takes a lot of pagan themes and incorporates it into the work at hand. Uh, theosophy is one example, the Freemasons, um, anything like that will have these metaphysical aspects that have been well researched because it was just expected back then. It seems like everything had to have 
proof? Where did you get this from? How are you interpreting this? And it shows in the citations of those works. So my favorite starting point is Janet and Stuart Farrar. They wrote A Witch's Bible, which is a compilation of multiple works that Stuart had published previously. They talk about Gerald Gardner, who is considered the father of modern witchcraft and how he came to witchcraft and the development of the Book of Shadows. Lots of good information there. So this is the kind of work that I want to get back to is finding those early works, researching those early ideas, researching the ideas of other metaphysical groups and traditions and seeing how it all comes together, how it all connects together. The reason I believe this is important is going to go back to this word connection. As mentioned before, when we can see the connections between ourselves and other people, when we can see the connections between what we practice and what other people practice, it not only creates a greater sense of a collective unconscious, if we want to go the route of Carl Jung, or a community world where everyone has essentially the same root source, which we do, we all have the same divine spark in us. So that's part of it. It's this communal feeling and seeing the connections between us and everyone else. But it is also a greater understanding of our connection to this divine force in terms of divine history. What do I mean by that? I mean, the universe, divine energy, we can, we can delve into quantum physics if you like. I have not studied that, but it's out there everywhere. You can find many people talking about it. Time is not linear. Experience is not linear. There are multiple, if you believe in it, there are many infinite number of different pathways based on every single choice that we make. Same thing with the idea of karma and reincarnation. Our lives today are based off of all of the decisions our previous selves made. And when we can start connecting these things, then we can start seeing how we behave in life and what we do in life as much more important. Every little decision, every little thing that we do has a repercussion somewhere down the line. And it is the repercussion of previous decisions and actions further up the line. So again, it's a thought process. It makes us start to think and it makes us start to question. And by doing that, we can see more in our lives in the value of what we're doing than we would if we're just looking from our little bubble of I'm here right now and I'm doing this right now and this is just mundane life. So this is why I believe this study of history, meaning history in terms of timelines and also history of where do you come from? Where do I come from? What, how do we all connect? This is why I think it's so important. And so my last thought on that is if we cannot effectively at least start to understand these connections we have with everything around us, we are never going to be able to master our magic. So this brings us into the second half of this is magic, magical mastery, right? What is it? Well, in my belief system, in my understanding of things, magical mastery is essentially our ability to control the evolution of our lives through understanding our connection to divine. This is why I got onto such a ramble about why that's important to figuring out those connections, because if we don't understand that, we cannot take control of our future selves, our future based off of every little thing that we do now.
So as mentioned before, divine energy is not temporal, meaning it's not timeline based. And it's also not linear. Again, no past, present, future. So when we start to connect all times, all possibilities, and all other forms around us, that's when we really get this idea of what is possible. Once we start to see these connections and we start to understand that that person who's annoying me right now, that's prob that was probably me, either in a past life or a few years ago or what have you. So I can't really get upset at that person. I can't really get annoyed at that person because they are me, essentially. Once we start to make these connections between time and space, I, there's not really any sense in saying, oh, well, I don't like that person or I don't like that country because of whatever ideology they have or that group of people because of whatever they practice. I can't say that. Why? Because that was me or can be me in the future. Or, you know, if, if you look at it in those terms, it makes absolutely no sense to continue to focus on these outside things that don't matter in the long run. What we need to focus on then, so we are taking away outside focus. We are starting to focus internally. Remember, this is the, the point I was starting to make already a few videos ago and focus on, okay, so if I am connected to everything around me, how do I need to behave now? I need to not get upset with people because that's just asking for negative energy to come my way. I need to not put judgment on people and places and times and things because that's not my place. The only way I can change something that I see as wrong is to change it in myself. So if I don't like how someone treats someone else, the only thing I can do is to monitor how I treat other people, monitor how I view other places. So by doing that, then now you're creating these little positive energetic outpourings, right? That have consequences, just like the negative ones, they have consequences. So these positive changes have positive consequences and if enough of us do it, then we're bound to get a better world, hopefully. That, to me, is a very good thought. And how this works out with our magic is that we become more aware of how we are using our magic, of what intent we put into our magic. So our self-mastery, you know, essentially becomes our magical mastery. Self-mastery is the ideal, right? You hear about it a lot for in things like philosophy and stoicism, etc., etc. It definitely has a good purpose. Now, if you couple that with, if you combine it with magical process, spell casting, ritual, living a magical and spiritual lifestyle, then it becomes even more powerful, even more effective, because now you have a something a little bit more than the goal of self-mastery. With self-mastery, you have a goal of the type of person you want to be. When you apply this to magical mastery, now you have a goal of how you want to be, but you also have a goal of how you want to change the world. And hopefully it's a good how you want to change the world. And if you work on the self-mastery, it will be a good how you want to change the world. So this is why it's so important to combine these things. That's the general overview. That's the gist of what I wanted to talk about today. I'm hoping I was quasi clear. If there are any points of this video that you want me to clarify for you or anything that you think is maybe wrong or maybe needs additional information, please do comment and let me know and we can work on getting that information out there.
If you have not already, please remember to subscribe to the channel because I have many more videos coming out on both the spiritual side of witchcraft and kind of moving beyond the traditional witchy tools. And I also have additional videos planned on the more traditional witchy tools and activities. So I'm hoping that you will enjoy that. I'm looking forward to it and would love to share that enjoyment with all of you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, blessed be everyone.